is no place I would rather be than to be in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. And we thank you for this opportunity. I told Pastor, you know, last Sunday I was supposed to preach, but you know how the Holy Ghost does. He just takes over. <laughs> but I told Pastor today, you obey God and don't worry about that I have to preach because if, you know, I mean, the Holy Ghost wants to do what he wants to do, we're going to let him do it. Amen. But I know that God has already spoken through you because, yes, God is in this place because there is, I mean, the Lord already told me before I even came to church that there was going to be somebody here that he has been dealing with. And yes, the Spirit of God is moving in a way that a lot of people are not used to. But that's okay. That's okay. I said, God... I, what, whatever you do, I, I, I might, it might not be too popular among a lot of people, but yeah. whatever you do, I want to be in the big middle of it. And, and, and I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it sounds like. As long as I know it's God, that's where I want to be. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. And we are seeing God do some wonderful things. Woo. I know some of you probably, how many, how many is here today that you've been asked to leave certain churches? Anybody? And you know the reason that we've been asked to leave churches is because they don't like the people that we minister to. And I said, that's okay, that's okay, because Jesus said, whosoever will, let them come. So it's none of my business. It's God's business. Can you say amen? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We know that the enemy is at work today. How many knows that? You know that? Yes? He's at work. But you know what? God is at work too. Hallelujah. There's a lot of people that are really going through a discouraging time. A lot of Christians are facing things today that they've never faced before. Amen? Amen. But I'm telling you that God is always faithful. Because he is doing a work today. He is manifesting his power and his spirit. Amen. Oh, and some people say, oh, well, I've never seen anything like that before. My Lord. That's okay. Because you know what? He said, I'm going, in the last days, he said, I'm going to do a new thing. And then he said, will you know it? Some people don't even recognize the move of God because they're so full of criticism. But God said anyway, I'm going to do a new thing. Will you know it? We're so used to going to church. I mean, some people are poor. We're not here. We never know when we come to church what God's going to do. But some people, you know, they go to church and they, I got to have one of these benches. What are you going to do? Well, just watch. Some people go to church. Come on. Somebody might say amen to go. But you see what God is doing. He is wanting to stir.
the hearts of men and women because Jesus is about ready to split the clouds of glory. Hallelujah. Ha. Woo, my Jesus. Where are we at? And you know what God is saying to his people? Get ready. And, and, and this is one thing the Lord gave to me and he wants me to say to you. Think it not strange concerning the things God is telling his people today. Don't think it's strange, but he's saying, get ready, prepare your hearts to receive what I have in store for you. What is God doing? He's preparing his people to face what the church is about to face that they have never faced before, especially here in America. Here in America, some people don't even like it when we sing God bless America. Some people don't even like it. My country, it is. They don't want the church. They don't want the American people to live under the grace of God. But nevertheless, we are here and we're going to stand faithful to God. Because God has called the people for this day and this hour to be faithful to God. Woo, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, what does it say? You shall, say shall, receive Power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. And if I would have a text today, it would be this. Spread the word. Spread the word. That God is moving by the power of his spirit. And you individually shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. That's the reason that the devil tries to fight the Holy Ghost. Oh, he doesn't want God's people to be full of the Holy Ghost and full of power because the power we go forth in the name of Jesus with power. Spreading the word. Jesus said, go into all the world to preach the gospel. Didn't he do it? Sure. Spread the word throughout all the world. Hallelujah. And you shall receive the anointing and the power. That's why it makes such a difference when we begin to worship and we worship in the name of Jesus Christ we worship him in spirit and in truth hallelujah and that will make a difference Ooh, that's the reason I like this church <laughs> you know we go to a lot of churches and honey I'm telling you some of them are as dead as a doorknob But I'm telling you, there is nothing like the spirit and the power of God. There are a lot of people today that they have felt, Pastor Doug, like they are, have been a vagabond 
for so long. What is a vagabond? It's a wonder. Just wandering around. Feeling they have no place to go. They don't belong any place. But thank God for the power of Jesus Christ and for the power of the Holy Ghost. We are no longer vagabonds. But we are free in the spirit and the anointing of God. Once a man or a woman asked Jesus to come into their hearts and their lives. Oh, remember, whosoever will, let them come. Let them come. So people are coming. That they found out that the word of God is true. And a lot of these so-called preachers don't know what they're talking about. All right. All right. Come on. They don't. They're ignorant to what God is doing today. When I hear one of those TV preachers they get up and they blast a certain group of people. I just say, God, forgive him. He's ignorant. He does not know or she does not know what they're talking about. So no longer do men and women need to be a wanderer or a vagabond. Because Jesus came that we might have life and we might have more abundant life. I've been memorizing the book of Galatians and I'm in the third chapter. And I like this. He says, as many of you as have been baptized into Christ hath put on Christ. And then he goes on to say, there's neither Jew nor Greek, neither bond nor free, neither male or female, but all of us are one in Christ Jesus. Woo! I'm about to get happy. Thank you, Jesus. God wants you to know that you can and you must walk in freedom. The enemy is at war against the church today. So we put on the Lord Jesus Christ. We put on the power of the Holy Ghost being filled with the anointing that we can go forth in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There is someone under the sound of my voice today that has been battling. I don't know, maybe somebody online. You have been battling and the Lord is saying, be of good courage and be not afraid for you are not a vagabond. You are not a wanderer when you come to Jesus Christ. That's the reason that the enemy is trying to hinder people from coming to Jesus Christ because he does not want them to have that freedom that God gives us in Jesus Christ, can you say amen? amen? Because, you see, Peter stood up and he gave the word that Joel spake. In the last days, I like this. In the last days, I will pour out of my spirit upon all. All upon, all upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Shall speak the word of God. Hallelujah. That's the reason God 
is, oh, we might be in a time when the enemy is trying to discourage folks. But I'm telling you, we are still in the midst of revival. When the enemy fights the hardest (laughs) is when revival breaks forth the greatest. To encourage his people. You know, it might be easy for some people to say, well, Sister Evelyn, I just pray and it just seemed like I can't get anywhere. Stop it. Stop whining and start praising. You will find God in the middle of your praise. (laughs) You know, brother, sometimes I get up and I just, oh, Dennis will say, how are you feeling today? And I, uh, I just feel so tired and wore out. And you know what I have to start doing? Praise. Start praising God. It doesn't matter how you feel. God is still the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes, you know, this old body of mine just turned 80 years old. <laughs> and, and a few years ago, I went, to, I went to a doctor and I told him, oh, I just feel tired all the time. He said, how old are you? And I told him, he said, well, do you think it could be age? <laughs> well, you got something there. <laughs> Because these old bodies, they kind of wear out. But I'm telling you, I'm here to tell you, the Holy Ghost is still real in this old body. Woo! Woo! Hallelujah. Woo! The other day, Pastor and, and Pastor Morgan and Rick Averill was here and we were talking and we were talking about, well, you know, I just turned 80. And Pastor Morgan said, you look just the same as you did when I first met you. Now, now I got to thinking about that. Does that mean I looked old back then? (laughs) And then Brother Rick said, you look the same as when I first met you. And then I thought, But I'm telling you that the Holy Ghost will move upon an old flesh. Woo! Woo, you like to sit on the... So I get you. (laughs) Praise God. But we are living in a time that God is manifesting himself. Through signs and wonders and miracles. And we see them every time we come here and we gather together. Nancy, we see the power of God, don't we? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because God is manifesting himself. And he he loves when his people, when his people get lost in his spirit. Amen. And listen, there is things that God gave us to know that the coming of Jesus Christ is near. Amen? Amen? Amen. Come on. And Matthew 24 and 6. Oh, there's a lot in here. Amen, Pastor or Brother Dennis. Lot, huh? And what does it say? And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. But he said, don't be troubled. In other words, don't be afraid. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. He said, there would be earthquakes and diverse places and We've just seen a terrible, terrible earthquake killing thousands of people. But he said, these things must 
come to pass. But don't be afraid. In other words, and then, and then he goes on to say, lift up your head and rejoice for, the, for your redemption draweth nigh. Jesus is about to split the clouds of glory. I don't care what the devil might say. I don't care what he might do. He may threaten you. You may be kicked out of churches, honey, but you will not be kicked out of the church. And that's the church of the living God. And Jesus is his name. Woo! Right here in Phoenix. We were, we were asked to leave two different churches. And it wasn't anything that we did because the first church, the pastor came to us and said, the Lord sent you here to help me. Oh. And I thought, okay. Uh-oh. But we had been to a conference in uh, Long Beach. And these two women came up to us and they said, we're going to be in Phoenix and we're going to be visiting. What church do you go to? So we told them. Months went by. One Sunday, I turned around and I looked. And this one girl, honey, she was as butch as they come. She walked down that aisle And her little old partner was walking beside her, real feminine. And where did they, where did they go? Sat right down by us. And then, and then the one put her arm around. And I thought everybody on that platform was going to fall off of their seats. <laughs> and I think the pastor may have got a clue. He called us into his office. Oh, you've heard me tell this. But then he asked us to get out of his office, to get out of his church, and not to come back. And I went to Africa. And while I was gone, Dennis thought, I'm going to sneak in, because it was a large church. I'm going to sneak in, and I'm going to sit in the back, and nobody will see me. Well, he drives up on the parking lot. And then he, he walks in and sits in the back. Somebody comes to him and said that he wasn't, you know, pastor told you not to come. And uh, so Dennis just asked him, what are they going to do? They said, well, we'll carry you out. And he said, I, Dennis, you know how he is. He says, I advise you not to do that. <laughs> Come on. But I'm telling you, you see, God is sending revival among a people that was not a people. And it takes a revelation from God to understand and see what God is doing in this day, in this hour. He said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And God is saying to his people, stand strong and be faithful. Because the end is at hand. And there's one thing I want. When I stand before God, I want to hear him say, my good and faithful servant you didn't give up when the time got rough but you stood the test hallelujah
How many wants to stand the test? The enemy will try to rob you of your faith in God. I've heard people say how that their faith is so weak. Especially, it seems like, when it comes to their healing physically. And they ask God for a healing, and it seems like he doesn't do it. And the enemy will say, see, God's not concerned about you. And that's a devil. Because Jesus said, by my stripes you are healed. If I don't feel healed, I'm healed. Because his word said, you are healed. And I want you today to receive what you have need of from God. If it's a spiritual need, if it's a physical need, whatever it is, receive it today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This is your day. I said, this is your day. This is your time to receive what God has for you. Hallelujah. Because of God's faithfulness. Because of his love. Remember this. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. You may feel at times that you're walking alone. But you're not. When it seems like you're going through the time of trouble. Thank you, brother. When it seems like you're going through the time of trouble. Remember, you're not in it alone. He goes through whatever you go through. He goes through it with you. Because of his faithfulness. Hallelujah. And if you've been discouraged. And if you feel. Like. You're alone. Remember you're not. Because. He's faithful. Stand to your feet. Would you, can I get you to move this back over there? Hallelujah. If there's anyone today, thank you. If there's anyone today that you have a need, you're here. You came to this service with a need physically, spiritually, whatever it is. Jesus is here to meet that need today. I want you to just move out and just come on up and let God let him minister to you. Come. 
come true. I will choose. In the name of Jesus. Let the anointing power. right now. Jesus said. 